Do you know how a website works? I know it's pretty easy to type in a website name and for the browser to show it to you. But have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes? In this video, let's try to understand that. Hey there, this is Kamal and let's get this video started. Just like how a presentation consists of different slides and how a document consists of different files. Similarly, a website consists of different files as well. These files generally include a media file, an audio file or an image file. And along with these files, there's another code file which bundles all of these together and is given to the website. The code in this file is generally written in the language of HTML. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Now we know that the website is made up of a bunch of files. But where do you generally keep these files? If they are on your computer, you can then directly access them by right clicking on them or double clicking them. But if you want to access it remotely from anywhere in the world, then you have to place it somewhere else, right? So the place where we keep them is known as a server. So a server is essentially a computer, but it doesn't have a monitor, keyboard or a mouse. Instead, it is equipped with a super fast processor and a high speed internet connection. So we take all the files regarding the website and keep those files in this server. So the thing here is that we can use our home computer as a server as well. But the problem arises when we have to run the server continuously with a high speed internet connection and without any lag. And there shouldn't be any downtime as well. That means there should not be any power outage. But these are the factors which are not in our hands. So to avoid these, we generally use third party servers. That is, we take the servers from different companies, that is we buy them or rent them and then we use the servers from them and we place our files in those servers. The process of us taking or renting the servers from other companies is known as web hosting. So we have multiple web host providers who give out servers from where we can buy them and use them for our own benefits. We have many hosting providers in the market. Some of them are GoDaddy, BigRock, HostGator or DigitalOcean where we can directly buy the servers from them and place our files in those servers and everything related to that server that is the maintenance, the check and all of that will be taken care of by that company. These types of companies generally manage thousands of servers at the same time so it's bound to be effective. So now we know that we have to place these files in a server. So now we can ask a browser to get a particular website for us. But here the problem arises when the browser doesn't know where the server location is. Like there might be multiple servers in the world and the browser doesn't know which server contains the files or the website that we are asking for. As the end user, you don't know which server the files are located in. Because of that, the browser doesn't know which server to search for the files. So to resolve this, we generally use what is known as an IP address. An IP address is like a house address which is used to represent a house. So if we type in a house address in the Google Maps, then we'll be able to get the location of our house in the world. Similarly, an IP address is like a unique string representing a particular server. So if we type that particular string in the URL, you'll be able to get that particular server as well. This is an example of an IP address linking to a particular server. All of this is well and good, but do you think is it possible for us to remember the IP address for each and every server or website that you want to visit to? It's not practically possible, right? So to overcome this, we use what is known as a domain name system. The domain name system, also known as DNS, is sort of like a telephone directory which contains the domain name and it links the domain name to the IP address. So whenever you type in a domain name in the browser, automatically that particular domain name is mapped to the IP address and all of these is listed out in the telephone directory, that is the DNS. So let's now pictorially represent all of the things that we have seen till now. So let's say you are an end user trying to search for packetcode.in. Whenever you search for packetcode.in in the browser URL bar and you click on search, automatically that request is seen by the browser and that browser goes to the DNS directory and searches for packet code. And then it references the IP address linked to this particular domain name and then it goes to that location of that IP address and then asks the server for the files related to this website. And when the server returns these files to the browser, the browser takes these files and generates the web page based on the code file that it was given and then delivers that file to the end user. So this is what happens whenever you try to open a website in a browser. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you liked what you watched till now. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.